Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it will whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to talk about pH. Let's get started. Before I get into what pH actually is, I'd like to take a moment to explain why we want to measure and control pH. There are two main reasons. The first reason is to prevent pathogenic and spoilage microbes from taking over the mash or wash as they typically prefer more basic conditions. This is one of the reasons why yeast release organic acids in the first place, as a defense mechanism. However, some bacteria and funguses like acidic conditions. Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, and Leuconostoc are bacteria that convert glucose and other hexose sugars into lactic acid. Acetic acid producing bacteria like Acetobacter turn ethanol into acetic acid, and Gluconobacter which turn glucose and other sugars into acetic acid. Then there is Bretonomyces, another yeast sometimes considered a spoilage fungus as it can create flavors reminiscent of a barnyard, band-aid, or a metallic taste. However, some of these microbes are intentionally used in fermenting, at least in the case of lactic acid bacteria and Bretonomyces, to add extra flavor and character to beverages. Rums that use muck or dunder will definitely be infected by these microbes as well. The second reason to control pH is that yeast and many of the enzymes that will be used have their own pH range. If you fall outside this range, you can potentially cause the yeast to go dormant or die, and in the case of enzymes, drop their efficiency or denature the enzyme altogether. So it's a pretty important metric to watch for. But what is pH? pH is a value that denotes how acidic or basic a solution actually is. The pH value is the negative logarithm of the molar concentration of hydronium ions. You can just say hydrogen ions though and everyone will understand what you mean. It is a negative logarithm simply to make things easier and give us a positive pH value most of the time. Most hydrogen ion molar concentrations you will deal with will be, low, will be below one molar or one mole per liter and always give us a positive pH value. The pH scale is a logarithmic scale going from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral, meaning there are the same number of hydrogen ions as hydroxide ions. As you move from 7 to 0, it gets more acidic, meaning that more hydrogen ions are present. As you go from 7 to 14, it's more basic, meaning less hydrogen ions are present. Each whole number change is an order of magnitude higher or lower in concentration of hydrogen ions than the last. So a pH of 5 has 10 times more hydrogen ions as a pH of 6. You can in fact have acids with a value lower than 0, including negative values, and bases with a pH higher than 14, but we don't need to worry about those because we won't be worrying, working with concentrations that high. You measure pH with an instrument called a pH meter, like so. This is the electrode that you place in the solution. This is the meter part. It has a replaceable electrode, which is handy. So what is an acid and what is a base? An acid is a chemical that donates a proton or hydrogen ion, accepts electrons, and can react with a base to neutralize it. A base, on the other hand, is a chemical that donates an electron or a hydroxide ion, accepts protons, and can react with an acid to neutralize it. Neutralize is a term for the reaction that happens between an acid and a base. It doesn't necessarily mean all the acid or all the base will be gone afterwards though. There is also a second term used for bases, which is alkaline. All alkalines are bases, but the difference is that an alkaline substance is water soluble whereas not all bases are. Most alkaline substances are based on alkali metals like uh, sodium or potassium and alkaline earth metals like calcium or magnesium. You can use a variety of acids and bases to alter pH. There is one exception, uh, strong acids. They aren't really used in distilling or in brewing to alter pH since you would require so little that it isn't practical to use. I'm talking on the order of microliters, which is a difficult amount to measure out. It's more common for people to use weak acids like lactic acid, citric acid, and malic acid, amongst others. For strong bases, people will use 
sodium, potassium, or calcium hydroxide. For weak bases, people typically use sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and calcium carbonate. There are lots of other weak acids and strong bases and weak bases you can use, but there's too many to list here. Now, the simplest method of adjusting pH is simply to measure the pH of the wash at a small amount of the acid or base of choice, and then measure it again. Repeat over and over until you are at the pH you want. However, the masses or volumes of an acid or base used can be exceptionally small. 50 liters of distilled water at a pH of seven can be dropped to a pH of four with only one gram of citric acid. One gram of citric acid is slightly less than one eighth of a teaspoon. You can just make up a pre-made solution using distilled water and the acid or base of choice at a fixed concentration and pH, and then just pour that into your mash or wash. This way you know the pH will never drop below or rise above the pH of the solution you are adding. If you want the more complicated method, mathematically figuring out exactly how much acid or base you need to add, that'll be in my next video titled Adjusting pH. Generally speaking, I set my pH at 4.8 just after adding ingredients, but before mashing, and then again after mashing, before fermenting. I sometimes like to use what is called a buffer, which is a combination of a weak acid and its conjugate base, sometimes known as its salt. Like citri citric acid is a weak base, citrate is its conjugate base. In my case, I specifically use sodium citrate along with citric acid. A buffer will try to keep the pH at a value of your design by neutralizing other acids and bases that are trying to raise or lower the pH. So my buffer, I tailor towards a pH of 4.8, and it will attempt to keep the pH at that value. Doing the math for buffers isn't that much more difficult than what will be shown in the adjusting pH video, but buffers will be a separate video later on as well. So just because I use a pH of 4.8 doesn't mean you have to. Check the pH range for the yeast you're using and the enzymes you're using, and tailor it to that. Make sure to take notes as well. And that's pH. Um, not super technical, not super hard to grasp. Adjusting pH will be math heavy and it will be a little more technical, but I can walk you through all the steps and I think you'll find it's pretty easy. It's just some normal algebra and you can use some online tools to figure things out as well. That's it for this video. Please click like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and have a great week.